My name is Dave Seibert. I'm the Chief Operator at the Derry Township Municipal Authority in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I've been here this year, I think it'll be 43 years that I've been here with Derry Township. Getting kind of close to retirement, but not yet. When I first started here, you had not, nothing on this side of the road. No septage receiving, nothing. Then we got a small septage receiving station down there and our air zones, we had four air zones, two clarifiers. All this was, wasn't here. That building was a filter building and basically was sand and coal filters. And then it went to carbon filters. And just imagine, you know the carbon filters like you would screw in your sink, you know, to take all the, to clean the water? They were carbon towers and they were absolutely huge. They, uh, you could put all the water through it. And in our chlorine contact tank, we used to have a joke, you'd throw a quarter in and it would go down 12 feet and you could tell whether it was heads or tails. And after a while though, you start looking at the amount of energy, the pumps were huge. The blowers were huge, everything. With, even without the carbon filters, we were surpassing our, our permit. And we, this plant has done very, very, very well. It's just everything over the years, it just seems like this plant never sleeps. It's always growing. What we have here is an egg-shaped digester, and we call it an ESD. And it's a 1.2 million gallon vessel that is actually shaped like an egg. And all the sludge is rotated through it and mixed and heated. Our, our egg-shaped digester stays at 98 degrees and it can't change more than one degree in a day or it'll affect the, the methane formers. So what happens is, once the methane is done, it comes off and goes down to the Avivo cover and is stored in the cover. And basically what that is is storage and it keeps it at an equal pressure all the time because the gas cleaning system needs an equalized pressure to keep going. So basically, we have all that dirty, low pressure methane gas. It's about 11 and a half inches of water column in the pressure wise. But then we bring it into the cleaning unit. Actually, the hydrogen sulfide system is running in series. So the gas will come in and go to the top of the first hydrogen sulfide tank. It comes out, goes across, goes up, and goes into the second hydrogen sulfide tank. And then it comes out. Well, from there, it comes across and it goes to the knockout tanks. From there, we have three different blowers. They'll take it from 11 and a half inches of water column to five PSI. And they just run constantly, they're VFD driven, and that's just how they work. And if you notice, these are very quiet, which is very nice. And what it does is it use chilled glycol. So now you have a chill, I mean a unit in there that is cold, like 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and you have the warm gas that's wet coming over it. Well, it's like a dehumidifier. It drops all the moisture out. The moisture runs down traps and goes into a drip trap. And that takes all the moisture out. From there, it ends up coming over to the siloxane system. And this is a, a siloxane system that regenerates itself. Everything is run by the computer and it runs flawless. And what happens is we have to take the siloxane out because it is very detrimental to the engines for the cogen system. I cannot run anything without this. I cannot run anything without this. This has to be reliable or the cogens cannot run because I cannot put hydrogen sulfide and siloxane through the, the cogens. From there, the gas comes back and goes into the reheat system. And once it leaves the reheat system, it goes straight across, down. It can go to our old gas train room to be used in the small cogen we have in the other building, or with our new cogens, or the boiler. What we have here is a, a gas blending skid. 
So if we don't have quite enough methane to run an engine, it will mix it with natural gas because you have to keep an eye on how much of everything you're using to, to make anything else. Methane for us is free. Natural gas is not, but it can be cleaned that it could be put into natural gas lines and then they buy it back. The gas comes over to one of two cogens. Now these are 16 cylinder Cummins and each one of them is a megawatt. At this point in time, one will run at a time, one will be standby. And even running one of them, this, this facility will be net zero. We're actually looking at some of our pump stations that are larger because we will not use all the electricity here. So we can kind of, let's say bank the electricity, put it in a bank and use it for the other pump stations that are quite large. Because of it, we already ordered our first electric vehicle. We're gonna start getting into that. I mean, if we have electric, why not use it? Why not use it? One of the things with a cogen is, it not only makes electricity, it'll make enough hot water to heat this entire facility. And to give you an idea, without a cogen running, or my little one, and we're, let's say we're on oil with our furnace, we can, in a cold winter month, we can go through three to 6,000 gallons of heating oil a month. When these are gonna run, one of them, or my little one is running, we go through maybe 100, 200 gallons, that's it. So they're very efficient. Very, very efficient. Like I said, you'll notice savings in electricity and that comes up front. But then also you notice the savings in your oil because you're not using any oil. And well, you, I don't know if you know what heating oil is going for now. So if you go through three to five, maybe 6,000 gallons a month, that's a lot of money. You're just saving it. So what we're looking at this facility is when this one cogen runs, we're looking at being at net zero. Net zero.